Okay, you'll notice we still have notes here from Shelley as we move into Keats because we're going to see some parallels, some connections, some threads between Shelley and Keats, especially in here, right? In here that we were working with. Um, one thing that you might have noticed with these romantic poets is picking up some subject matter about their lives, which helps us to understand their works. That's part of subjectivity, right? Pulling things in, the eye is, the poem is the eye of the poet. Um, Keats had a very short, very sad life. And if not for his very short life, um, literary historians, scholars, you know, widely hold that if he would have lived longer and continued writing, is that Keats would have surpassed Milton and even Shakespeare in terms of the, the greatness of his writing and his contribution to letters. He lived a very short life. So interesting, some interesting facts about Keats. When he was a um, young man, he fell in love with a girl named Fanny Braun and then he asked Fanny to marry him, and she said no. And then shortly thereafter, Keats' brother fell sick with tuberculosis, so Keats started to care for him, and then, of course, you know, this, during this time, there's really not many cures for diseases like we have today with modern medicine. So Keats watched his brother die, and then shortly thereafter, Keats coughed and then looked into the, his handkerchief and saw blood. Yeah, and he had contracted tuberculosis from when he was caring for his brother who would, was dying from the disease. And, you know, that long, painful process that, that, that Keats endured of dying from tuberculosis. And there's accounts when he was progressed far into the disease that when, we, when he would wake up, he would cry because he had not died during the night. That's how much, that's how much he was wishing just to, just to slip away. Now, with all that sadness that was going on in Keats' life, he has left us some just an incredible poems, incredible. And sadly, we don't, you know, we could sit here and just talk about these poems for hours and days to go in. So let's go ahead and take a look here. O to a nightingale. And a lot of people make the connection between the birds, which is great, but it's not just birds. They're, they become an emblem for, for these poets exploring, right? Exploring. Now listen. My heart aches in a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past, and left wards had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of beech and green, and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease. So here's Keats, right? And he's sitting out, and he hears the song of the nightingale. But just like before, he cannot see the bird. Hmm, there we are again. Oh, for a drought of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in a deep delved earth, tasting of flora and the country green, dance and provincial song and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south. Right, what is, what is Keats wanting? He's wanting a glass of wine full of the true, the blushful hippocrine with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth that I might drink and leave the world unseen and fade and with thee fade away into the forest dim. What does Keats wants to do, right? He's sad. He wants to drink poison, some hemlock, a dull opiate, right? Take some drugs, drink some wine. Why? So that he might leave this world and fade away, join in 
to this where the nightingale is. Fade far away, dissolve, and quite forget what thou among the lees hast never known. Hmm, did we hear that again? Right? The nightingale, this ideal spirit, doesn't know the pains and the grinds of what it means to be alive here on earth. Weariness, fever, fret. What do men do? Sit and hear each other groan. Where palsy shakes a few sad, last gray hairs. Where youth does what? Grows pale, specter thin, dies. Where but to think is to be full of sorrow and laden-eyed despairs. Where beauty does what? Cannot keep her lustrous eyes. Or love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Right? Here where we are, it's full of, I mean, beauty fades quick, just like that. You, you know, whew. what happens? We grow old, die, our hair falls out. Away, away, for I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus, I'm not getting drunk in his part, but on the viewless wings of posy. Though the dull brain perplexes and retards, already with thee tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through virtuous glooms and winding mossy ways. Right? So it's like he's traveling, he's escaping, moving. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet. You see, he's, he's, he can't, he's walking in the dark, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs, but in embalmed darkness, guess each sweet wherewith the seasonable month endows, the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, white hawthorn, and the pastoral eglantine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid-May's eldest child, the coming musk rose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer leaves. Hearing this song of the unseen nightingale become for Keats a transcendent moment, right? We had with Wordsworth, had with Shelley. We, we keep seeing this again and again. A source of the sublime, he's able to escape and leave away briefly. You could, I don't know if you could tell that word. He cannot see what flowers he can't see, but he's almost becoming a spirit like and floating and floating along. We still have some more, almost done. With this, we got a little bit more to go. We'll catch that in the next video.